What is going on everyone? For those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Benjamin Nowak, and for those of you guys that do and follow my channel, you probably recognize the fact that I've released a bunch of Seeking Bronze videos dedicated and focused on catching big smallmouth bass. So, the reception on those videos has been fantastic. You guys really like the smallmouth videos, so based on those comments, I decided to make this video here talking about one of the best smallmouth catching baits ever invented. For those of you guys that don't know what that bait might be, it is a tube. This bait has probably caught more smallmouth than any other smallmouth bait ever created. So today I want to share with you guys my tips, tricks, and techniques to hopefully help you guys put more smallmouth in the boat, the type of tube heads that I use, the type of rods that I use, and the four colors of tubes that I throw to put big smallmouth in the boat. Now the first color that we're going to talk about is one that I throw the least. It is a great crawfish imitator, but it's a color that I don't really throw unless I know those fish are really, really feeding on crawfish, or that is like a main forage type in the body of water. And this is made by Cruncher Baits. I'm not sure the exact color. Um, my buddy Grant Quinn over there sent me this color. Um, and then what it is, is it is an orange or yellowish body um, with some orange flake, black flake, and green flake. Now that green flake to me is really, really important. A lot of our crawfish, especially in the summertime, get a little bit of a green hue to them, so that green flake really sets off a lot of these big largemouth and smallmouth bass. My next color is my all-time favorite smallmouth catching tube color, and for those of you guys that have been big followers of the channel for a long time, you probably recognize this color. This is called the Shiz or Toad Teaser. Now, Toad Teaser and the Shiz, there's a slight variation between the two um, from Cruncher Baits, but essentially what it is is a dark green pumpkin or brownish color tube with some purple some whitish or gold flake and some black flake and it really really looks like a great goby imitator it's also a very very good perch imitator and a, just an all-around good color when that water visibility is less than eight feet when the water's a little bit stained when it's a little bit dirty this is my go-to color especially on lake huron and lake st Clair. this is a color you guys will see me have tied on pretty much all the time and then my last two colors are pretty much interchangeable for me. The first one, the one that I developed a ton of confidence in but don't really throw that much anymore is a smoke with some purple and silver flake. It's also got a little bit of black flake. Um, but I basically replaced that color with a cucumber black and purple flake. Now this color here is the one that I caught a 7-7 seven, seven largemouth on last fall. So don't be afraid, tubes do catch big largemouth as well as big smallmouth. But for me, for most guys across the country, a tube is a smallmouth bait. If you basically could think of a smallmouth bait, this is the one you're probably thinking of. Um, now there are two different tube heads that I like to use. I keep my sizes pretty simple between 3 16 and 3 quarter ounce. Now that's a big variety and range. You don't have to carry a whole bunch of different tube heads though because I'm going to show you guys the different sizes that I throw, the tube heads that I carry, um, and why I choose the certain tube heads that I do. So for a standard tube hook, this is a bite me tube and the packaging looks like this. It says bite me. It's a 60 degree flat eye tube hook with I believe a three out hook um, and 3 16 size. Now in a regular tapered, tapered style tube hook, I'm only throwing it between 3 16 and 3 8 ounce. I will not go heavier than this in a standard tube style hook. Um, the reason for it is because I'm going to switch over to a different style of tube hook that I think um, better suits the bigger style of hook. Now it's got a really good hook bend in this one. Um, and that's why I like the Bite Me style and they're relatively cheap. I believe they're $3 or $2 for pack of four. Um, so to me, that's a pretty cheap tube hook and it's a really stout, good hook in there, um, especially for throwing it on a spinning rod. It's kind of a lighter wire, but you can set the hook into those fish and fight them back to the boat really well. Now, I'm pretty much only gonna throw that on a spinning rod. Um, that's gonna be the most effective way to throw this style of tube. Um, tube head and it's gonna put a lot of really big fish in the boat. This is actually the style of tube head that I was using when I caught that 7.7 again and I've caught a lot of really big smallmouth doing that. But when I'm fishing the Great Lakes and I need to go a little bit heavier, I am throwing a football head style tube. Now this is three quarter ounce. This is actually the style of head that I started throwing late last year, um, especially last summer to catch a lot of really, really big fish. And there's a special way that I fish this bait. Now. The style and the sizes that I carry in that um, football style head is 3 8 to 3 quarter. So 3 8 a half, and 3 quarter. I do carry an ounce, but I don't really throw an ounce. Uh, you lose a lot of fish when you're fishing that big of a head. So 3 8 1 half, and 3 quarter ounce. And the way that I'm fishing this is either cracking it, which is a technique we'll talk about, or stroking it. Now, there is a difference between cracking a tube where you're not really moving that tube and stroking a tube where you're ripping that tube up off the bottom and letting it flutter back down. Um, 
and that's really when those really really heavier heads is going to come in to play also this is a gamagatsu um, 604 heavy jig hook so you're not going to bend it out on those fish when you stroke that tube up and you need to set that hook really hard on a bait caster this is the style of head that you're going to want to have also when you push it up into the tube head and the reason i did this before um, i was on camera was because it's actually pretty hard to do it takes it probably took me three or four minutes to get this tube head up in here it bulbs that head out and when you have a tube head that bulbs that head out like that um, it really really looks like a goby one of the biggest forage types on the great lakes right now is gobies uh, and what they are is a basically an invasive species that like slithers or like creeps along the bottom and they smallmouth eat them and get very very fat because basically all gobies are is straight fat um, and they're smallmouth candy so this is the best basically the best way that I've found to imitate a goby down there in the Great Lakes. You shove that football head tube or football head up inside that tube. This is what you come out with and it looks just like a goby. So these are the two different style of tube hooks that I like. Standard in 3 16 1 quarter, 3 8 football in 3 8 1 half and 3 quarter. Now with that I'm throwing those on two different setups. For the standard tube style, I'm throwing it on a spinning rod. This is an Arc Invoker, seven foot one, medium, extra fast. Um, I do kind of wish that I had a little bit longer rod. I, I, I think I could see myself going all, all the way up to a seven foot three, medium, extra fast rod with the tube because then you can make a longer cast and get the hook set into those fish. But for now, this is my tube rod. It's a seven one, medium, extra fast Arc Invoker rod. This is a lose tournament lose pro 3000 size reel it's a six two to one reel so it's a very high speed spinning reel 15 pound um, power pro braid to an eight pound sunline sniper leader um, and i actually use a little bit longer leader when i'm fishing a tube Bas basically because i have to retie a lot so i think it's about a 10 foot leader it just barely comes above the spool um, when i reel that that line in so that is my setup when i'm throwing just a standard style tube like this up to three eighths of an ounce. When I switch over to the football style tube, whether it's three eighths of an ounce or bigger, um, I'm switching over to a bait caster style of rod. Now, this rod here is the Fitzgerald Rod seven foot two frog rod. Now I know it's called a frog rod, but the reason that I like this rod, um, especially for stroking a tube is because it's got a moderate fast tip. What that means is that it's got a lot of bend in that rod, so it helps those fish stay pinned. And then I'm throwing it with a Lose BB1 reel. Uh, this is a high speed reel, it's a seven one to one reel. And then I've tricked it out with some spool speed bearings and spool speed handle. But the most important thing in my opinion is the line. I'm throwing it on 12 or 15 pound line. I like to throw it on that little bit lighter line because it has a little bit more stretch. Uh, again, I'm not gonna bend out as many hooks, but you will have to retie a lot. So if you're really, really fishing around a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy rock, where your line's getting nicked up, you're breaking off a lot, go up to 15 pound test, but in my opinion, 15 pound is the max when you're fishing about a bait caster. Now, I hope you guys didn't count out this tip. I'm sure you guys have seen it all over the place by now, especially in the Seeking Bronze series from Alex, from myself, or I know Rob mentioned it in one of his videos, but there is one trick that I have when fishing a tube that I truly believe will help you catch more fish. Now, this is a standard tube. Now, as you can tell, standard tube, it is glossy, out of the pack. There is a glossy finish on this tube, and especially in clear water, I think that's going to cost you bites. So what do I do to dole out a tube? Now, this is something that I believe there's not really anyone else that talks about this, but you can do it with any sort of bait. Doling out a bait in clear water will help you catch more fish. All you're gonna do is take your bait, set it on the deck of the boat. Uh, if you have gloves on or you have a shirt that you don't care about, you can do it on there as well, but all you're gonna do is rub it into that carpet, onto that cloth something with a coarse um, something with a coarse texture to take the gloss and shine out of that bait what it's going to do is make that bait much less glossy it's also going to soften that tube up um, that's going to help those fish hold onto it a little bit better it's also going to make the bait look more natural in the water now i don't know about you guys but um, there is not a bait fish or a crawfish or a piece of forage underwater that has a heavy shine to it. In my opinion, um, 
having a bait that is doled out is going to catch you a lot more fish because it looks more natural underwater, especially in clear water situations. So dulling out a bait will help you catch more fish. And finally, I want to talk to you guys about the ways that I'm going to fish a tube. Uh, there are three main ways, I guess, three or four, depending on what you consider um, the techniques. So one is the standard dragging a tube. You cast the tube out, you let it hit bottom, and you just slow drag it back to the boat. You drag that tube back, um, and you'll get bit along the bottom. It's a great way to fish, especially when those fish are highly pressured, and they're sucked tight to the bottom. You can get a lot of bites that way. The other way is hopping a tube, and all that is is cast that tube out when it hits bottom. You just shake your rod tip. That tube will hop up, kind of skip up like this, go right back down to the bottom. It's a great way to imitate crawfish, gobies. Um, great way to get a lot of bites. The other way that I fished a lot last year, and this is the way that I'll fish it on a bait caster, is what I call stroking a tube. For those of you guys that live on ledge, ledge fishing lakes, you've heard of stroking a jig. It's the same concept. All you're going to do is put that heavy weight in there, three quarter, half ounce. Um, you're going to cast that tube out, let it hit bottom, and stroke that tube up. It's going to shoot up, shoot up like this, and come straight back down. It's going to shoot up and come straight back down. And a lot of times those fish are going to eat it on the fall. That's why you need a high speed gear ratio reel. Pick up the line quickly, get a hook into that fish, and get him moving to the boat. That's called stroking a tube. That bait's coming straight up and goes straight back down and those fish are eating it. It's a great way to catch a lot of fish when it's a really tough bite because it's a reaction strike. Those fish see that bait come up, they look at it, and when it comes right back down in their face, they have to eat it. And the final way is something that Mark Zona talks about. Um, I think you have to do it on a spinning rod. It's called cracking a tube and it is slightly different. It is done on slack line. Zona talks about doing it on straight fluorocarbon. I can't afford to throw straight fluorocarbon. Um, it gets too many wind knots. Basically, the handling of straight fluorocarbon on the spinning reel is miserable. So you cast that tube out. I do it on braid. Um, you let there be a bow in your line. You're doing it on slack line. You're popping that slack. The reason it's called cracking a tube is because when you pop that slack, you can hear that line crack along the top of the water. It's called cracking a tube, and all that tube is doing is kind of scooting along the bottom. It's not jumping, it's not hopping, it's just scooting along the bottom. It's a great way to catch pressured fish. When that sun is high, um, it catches a lot of fish that way. And I'll try to do a tutorial for you guys um, on the differences between dragging a tube, hopping a tube, cracking a tube, and stroking a tube because they're all great ways to catch a lot of big fish. Um, but there are certain times, places, that you need to do one or the other to get bit. So there's a ton of information in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please share it with your friend. And we're gonna do something a little bit different because I don't think it matters. Hit that thumbs down button if you enjoyed the video. See how many thumbs downs we can get on this video because lately I've been getting a ton of thumbs down because I was trying to clickbait you guys. So hit that thumbs down button, share it with your friends, share it with your family. If you aren't already, hit that subscribe button. And as always guys, thank you for watching. Take care, Tet Lines, God bless.